Hello, I'm thrilled to welcome Iranian-American writer Sharnus Parsipur to our voice to talk about her experiences as a writer and as a woman growing up in a culture in Iran that isn't so receptive to a woman's voice. And she encountered many obstacles along her way, and she's here to share her writing and her women's perspective on the world and Iran and America. So, Sharnus, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Boise, your first time in Idaho, and welcome to Our Voice. So one of your more well-known books is called Women Without Men. And this is a play on Hemingway's short story collection, which is called Men Without Women. So this is an interesting play on words. I'm wondering, why did you choose that title? OK, uh, Hemingway, in his book, uh, Men Without Women, he it speaks about the men that they hate women or they don't understand the woman or they have problem with the woman. Okay. Um, for example, in one of these stories, he's in Switzerland in the mountain uh -huh. for a skiing and uh, there he saw a man that his wife has uh, died in the winter. Oh wow. And he can bury her in the grave so he put the corpse in the basement. The corpse in the basement, wow. And whenever he has a job to do in basement, he put the lantern in the mouth of the woman. Oh, wow. So she has changed her face in a very horrible form. I thought, okay, there is the woman that they don't understand the men or they hate the men or they can't understand the men. So the name of my book is Woman Without Men. Oh, wow. So you take it and reverse it, right? Yeah. Uh, Hemingway's talking about how uh, men don't understand women necessarily, and you're talking about how the women don't understand men? Yes. Yes, it's a reversal. Interesting. So uh, in your time in Iran, uh, you were imprisoned four times, uh, very difficult during the revolution, the rise of Ayatollah Khomeini in the 70s and 80s. And uh, reading your prison memoir, I noticed how uh, your first imprisonment, you tried to appease to the uh, interrogators who were imprisoning you. And then uh, by the fourth time, you get much more bold, courageous. Uh, I remember even reading that you said, you know, you guys can throw me into a well. I will try to get out of that well. And maybe I'll learn something about geology while I'm down there. So I'm curious that shift from being a little more timid, maybe scared, and then you become much more bold and courageous. Why that shift as you move through time in the prison? You know, these people were with two dimension of uh, thinking, you know what I mean? So it was very difficult to bother them. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I tried to be very human, and I spoke with them always, and I tried to convince them that they are don't do any interesting thing, but after a while I found that they don't understand me. Okay. So naturally I changed my skin and I try to be more courageous mm -hmm. and defend my ideas. Okay. And it worked, right? You got yeah. released soon after that. Yeah. Um, so also in this uh, Kissing the Sword, which is the name of your prison memoir, your mother was also thrown into prison, remarkably. And you meet her there. Uh, it wasn't intentional, but you meet your mother there. And she's sitting in a room, as I recall, surrounded by other women and chatting, uh, almost as if they were having coffee at home or something like that. She seemed very happy and content, as you described your mother, in prison. And I'm wondering, how could she do that? How could she seem so content and happy while she's imprisoned? Mm, she was a housewife, you know. She was a housewife. And yeah. the, the only political activity of her was to listen to the radio. And now in prison, she thought she's a heroine, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So she tried to give to other prisoners the confidence and the, she wanted to help them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she was always happy. And she tried to be happy. And at that moment, they executed every day a lot of people. Oh, wow. And it was a catastrophic situation. But, and she has a contrast with other uh, prisoners because they were sad and she was always happy. So this was the, her um, characteristic. Amazing. 
Amazing. Mm. Executions going on and she's still maintaining that happiness and yeah. uh, maybe a little naive of everything that was going on, but... No, she wasn't naive, but she thinks she's very important. She thinks she's... Okay. And she, they will execute her. Wow. So she, she decided to go for death and uh, cries, Viva Iran. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Charnoose.